Welcome back to Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jeremy Lapidus. If you are just tuning in, we just finished talking all about the NBA and the NBA Finals. We talked about Game 4, the crazy, huge victory for the Mavericks as they take the third biggest win in NBA Finals history, a 38-point walloping of the Boston Celtics. Uh, hand them their first loss of the of the NBA Finals uh, and their first loss on the road in the playoffs so far. Uh, as the cell as the series heads back to Boston tonight for Game Five, uh, we also talked about the odds for Finals MVP and what that race is looking like right now. Uh, we are uh, going to fi- we are done with our NBA talk for the day though. As we are moving on to the NHL, we're going to talk about an equally crazy game four between the Panthers and the Oilers that happened over the weekend and what we're looking at for the future of that series. Uh, But before we get into that, remember that if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation with a message in it. That message should pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, and everybody else around the world to see. If you do have a burning question about sports, go ahead and leave that in the comments. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. Appreciate all of you guys for sticking around and talking some sports with me here on a beautiful Monday afternoon. Uh, But like I was saying, we are going to move into the, excuse me, the NHL. Sorry about that. The Oilers similarly route the Panthers, just like the Mavericks did to the Celtics. There's a lot of similarities between these two series, really from the setup between them to the you know way that these games have kind of played out. The difference in this these two series are, I mean, if you look at the Oilers, the way that they've played these games, you can make a good argument that in the 12 periods that of hockey that have been played between the Oilers and the Panthers, the Oilers have won 8 of them. 8 of 12, and they're down 3-1. They were in danger of being swept, but that didn't happen. In Game 4, what happened was insane. The Panthers, the best defense in the league, the best goalie, still alive. Sergei Bobrovsky, who has been on this incredible hot streak, goes up to Edmonton, gives up eight goals. He gives up five and 16 shots, gets pulled in the second period as the Florida Panthers give up eight goals. They lose eight to one. A crazy, crazy game. Nothing like anybody, I think, in the hockey world was ever expecting. But this is what we see out of the Oilers. This is what is possible with a team that is so high-powered offensively, and it didn't really come from all the guys you expect. Holloway had a couple goals. You know, McDavid had three assists. He only had one goal. McDreisaitl had two points, two assists here. Those were his first points of the series. They were finally able to break through, and it was from all over the lineup. Darnell Nurse had his first goal of the postseason. You know, people were kind of dogging on him for the way he's been playing this postseason. He comes out, scores a goal, is huge for the Oilers in this game. This has been a, this is what happens when everything goes right for the Oilers. You see that offensive potential. Stuart Skinner is playing great hockey right now, you know, and while the Planthers kind of just played really sloppy that entire game that was my biggest takeaway from that game they were playing sloppy they took a lot of penalties they went on a five on three at one point that was the one goal that they gave up on the power play they were one the 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 oilers were one for six on the power play you know and that was on that three that was on that two-man advantage uh but you know this oilers team this is why they're here this is why this oilers team has made it to the finals they were able to flash that uh, that talent, that ability to come back and win these games when their back is against the wall. You go back throughout the entire playoffs. I mean, they haven't faced a 3-0 deficit ever, but in elimination games, they haven't lost yet, right? They were down 3-2 to against the Vancouver Canucks, the Vancouver Canucks team that looked like they were primed and ready to move on. Then, they come back, they win those last two games, something that only happens 20% of the time. They come back from down 3-2 after some back-breaking losses. 
you know, they're able to fight back. A couple goalie changes happen. That's when the West, when they reintroduced to Stuart Skinner back into the crease uh, after pick uh, after Pickard uh, won one and lost one. But it's it's a it's a tough tough road to come back. There's a reason that it's only been done one time in finals history. There's a reason that it's only been done four times in the history of hockey. And I know that's a lot that's a lot more than in uh basketball, but you know, it hasn't happened since 1942 in the finals when the uh Maple Leafs came back and beat Detroit, right? That's when there were like 10 teams in the in the NHL. So it's they're looking to chase history, and this series feels far from over. It has a much different feel than the than the and then the NBA series. Because, like I was saying, if you're going through and you're watching every single minute of every of of, this, of these games, you're looking at these games and you're saying, "Hmm, go through game one. The Oilers lose that three nothing. The Oilers won probably all three of those periods. Quite, if I'm being honest with you, I mean, you could make the argument for maybe one or two of those periods to to go towards the to go towards the Panthers. But if I'm scoring this like boxing, I'm giving them a point, right, for all three of those periods. And Sergei Bobrovsky did his job. Sergei Bobrovsky stole Game One, and that is what you can expect out of a goalie like Sergei Bobrovsky. That's part of the challenge of playing a team like the Panthers. You can't expect to just play better hockey and win the game because they have that guy. They have that guy that can just shut you down regardless of what you do, right? And that is so tough to go up against, but they're going to, they, they've clearly made some changes that, that worked here in game four here. They score eight goals and eight goals is not only an insane number to think about, it's the most goals not only given up in the playoffs this year, but the most goals given up by the Panthers all season long. The Panthers have never given up that many goals this entire season, and they give it up in a closeout game in the Stanley Cup Finals. This Oilers team is serious offensively, and we know that. Everybody watching this knows that, right? That is a huge, huge part of how they are able to, of how they were able to get themselves here. And it's something that we love watching about these Oilers team. That takes a lot of energy, and they've been playing. Again, energy, energy, energy. That is the key word when we're talking about a team that is down 3-0 trying to make this comeback. Because at times when you're down like that, it might feel hopeless. It might feel awful. It might feel like, oh, we're just going through the motions. We're done. We had a great season, but we're done. And you never want to get trapped in that headspace. That is how you get blown out, right? That's how you get complacent. And I think that's happened to both the Celtics and to the Panthers. And I think hopefully this is a big wave. I think this is probably going to be a big wake-up call for them. Now, the Oilers did make some changes, right? They shifted some lines around. They they put um they they put they put McDavid and Dreisaitl, uh together with some new pairings, and that worked awesome. And I think that you know, we were talking about this in the production meeting. Garrison, the 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 host of the Hockey and Golf podcast, brought up that the that the Oilers have never, after after losing three in a row this season, have always gone on win streaks of at least five games. Right after they lost three in a row, they went on that huge win streak that I keep bringing up, where they won, uh, I believe, almost a record breaking sixteen straight games. Uh, back in December into January. That is when Stuart Skinner was playing the way he is right now. You were going through that. They were giving up. They only given up more than three goals twice in that 16-game span. That is great, great uh, goalie playing. And that and that and that is that's part of it as well, right? This is keeping them in the game. This is keeping them invested in the series. And I still feel like this team believes. I feel like, like I was saying, they were playing better hockey. They just weren't able to get pucks past Bobrovsky. And they figured something out. They got five pucks past Bobrovsky in 16 shots in two periods. They scored eight goals against this stout Panthers defense. Now, the Panthers are going to make adjustments, right? You can't expect them to come back after an eight-goal game and not make adjustments. Um, but I think this is a series. And I know that I discounted the Oilers. I kind of called this series over. But that's because the Oilers hadn't been able to get anything past Bobrovsky, even in the, even in the periods they were winning. Like before this game, 
I counted five to four in periods. In the nine periods through three games, I counted that it was five four Oilers. Now it's eight to four or Oilers, right? That is a huge lead in period points. Now, period points is a metric that I have made up that means nothing. It means literally nothing to anybody, but it's just a way that I like to visualize these hockey games because hockey is a sport where the best team doesn't always win because goaltending is a thing, right? And you know that that kind of personal metric that I put on that I put on this series is it's purely subjective. Again, there's no there's no data that backs up these these period points that I'm putting in here. But uh, it shows how good Sergei Bobrovsky has been. It shows how good this Panthers defense has been. But they cracked the code. The Oilers did. They found a way past the netminder. And if they can continue again, they don't need to score eight goals every night. But this showed everybody that this they're not here to just they're just they're not they're not here to play. They're here to win. They're here to play hard. And they if they get the if they smell blood, they are going to attack. And this is going to be a fun, fun game. I'm very excited. I think I really do think that the Oilers have a legitimate shot of coming back from 3-0. We almost saw it earlier this postseason when the when the uh, Rangers almost gave up. Uh, 3-0 lead to the Carolina Hurricanes, right? This is a team, this Oilers team is a team that plays hard and does not give up. And that is a huge, huge important trait to have when you are going in a series that is really not going your way. But I do believe in this team. I think that if there is a team that can do it, it's a team with offensive firepower. And nobody else has more offensive firepower than the, uh, than the, than the Oilers, right? The Edmonton Oilers here head back to Sunrise, Florida, take to take on the Port, the Panthers in Game Five tomorrow. I'm very excited to see what happens. We'll uh, we'll break down Game Five uh, a little bit, I think, tomorrow if we have time. But uh, if we don't, I'm going to give you a prediction now. I think the Oilers take Game Five in overtime. Uh, not super high scoring, three two, four three, something like that. Uh, and I do think that this series makes it back to Edmonton for Game 6. So I'm excited for that. We'll see what happens in the rest of this series. But we are going to move into the world of baseball for the rest of our show. We're going to start off our we're going to start off our baseball talk a little bit about the wild card races. Uh, kind of some looking at the MLB standings a little bit, taking a look at how many teams are kind of clunched up, clinched up in that middle, uh, bunched up together there, especially in the NL wildcard race. And we'll talk about all that, what, where we're looking at here as we race towards the midway point of the MLB season. So stick around for that. We'll be right back here on Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. <laughs> 